Hello everyone, I'm Drew Patel from the University of Toronto and we are presenting a 112 gigabits per second minus 8.2 dBm sensitivity 4 pam linear TIA in 16 nanometer CMOS with co-packaged photodiodes. Here's the outline for our talk. We start off by introducing the focus of our work, then we discuss the key features which are the PD2 receiver interconnect optimization and our proposed TIA design. We then present our assembled prototype followed by electrical and optical measurements. Finally, we sum up by comparing with other works followed by conclusion. So let's get started with introduction. With the big bang of the internet powering artificial intelligence, machine learning, video conferencing, IoT, blockchain, and cloud storage applications have continuously increased the demand on the data centers with faster, lower cost, and energy efficient solutions. Such solutions for optical links, in particular, are in high demand for 100 plus gigabits per second links. Our work in particular focuses on the 400 gig and 800 gig Ethernet applications. Now taking that as our motivation, we target our optical receiver solution with proposed TIA in CMOS with packet substrate housing both the commercially available photo detector, the PD, and the CMOS chip flip attached with optimized interconnect between them for best performance. Overall, this co-packaged flip chip architecture can support high integration while posing low parasitics. And of course, this heterogeneous integration offers flexibility of choosing best suitable technology for both CMOS and PD to achieve superior performance. Now we will dive into one of the key features of this work of optimizing the PD to receiver interconnect. PD to receiver interconnect being in the high speed signal path, its design impacts the overall TI bandwidth. In this flip chip co-packaged architecture, this interconnect is fabricated on the packet substrate as a microstrip structure. We first recognize the opportunity of utilizing the inductive property of this PD to receiver interconnect for series peaking to extend the bandwidth. This can be observed by simply seeing the interconnect as an ideal transmission line and for simplicity whose characteristics impedance can be written as a square root of inductance over its capacitance per unit length. By simply reducing the interconnect width or in other words increasing its characteristics impedance, we can give rise to its inductance and lower its capacitance. Having the right amount of inductance between two large capacitive elements such as PD output and their RXIC input can help reduce effective capacitance seen by the TIA in the receiver chip and extend the passive front end bandwidth. We optimize the PD to receiver interconnects characteristics impedance for a given length to maximize the bandwidth. To perform more accurate PD to receiver interconnect optimization, we derive the necessary passive test bench model. We first extract the input impedance model of our proposed TIA, which we will see it in a bit, with first order RC components. We also insert the ESD diode worth of 80 fm to ferret at the input for increased reliability and protection and extract the RX input bump at capacitance of 100 fm to ferret. To reduce the effective capacitance imposed by the ESD diode and the bump pad, we include the series multi-layer multi-turn T-coil between them where it helps increase the bandwidth by two times. For this PD to receiver interconnect, we extract the S-parameters from the layout using the ADS tool. Lastly, we include the PD model provided by the vendor and LC-based bump model to complete the overall front-end passive model. With the PD to receiver interconnect under the spotlight of this optimization, we sweep the characteristics impedance for a fixed length and observe the transfer characteristics from the optical input in DBM to the resulting voltage at the TIA input. Nevertheless, the TIA input impedance model and selected T-coil depends on the TIA design and therefore the overall code design may entail iterative optimization. We perform these simulations for two different interconnect lengths. 250 micron and 500 micron. And these are the simulation results. The optimum characteristics impedance of a given interconnect length is selected by the one that provides the flattest possible DC gain with highest bandwidth. We would first like to highlight the simulation with interconnect with length zero. And that is the zero distance between PD and receiver, which results in the lowest bandwidth as there is no inductive component between the PD capacitance and the RX pad capacitance. For 250 micron interconnect length, characteristics impedance of 80 ohm provided the maximum bandwidth. However, due to manufacturing limitations, 75 ohm was fabricated instead. On the other side, 
For the 500 micron length, characteristic impedance of 50 ohm achieve the maximum bandwidth. In both cases, bandwidth from optical input to the TIA input was extended at or beyond 60 gigahertz. We will later showcase the measurement results from the fabricated prototypes. We will now explore our proposed TIA design. We will go through some design choices we made for our TIA. We first select the inverter as a foundational block for the TIA chain as it offers low voltage operation with higher linear swing. It is power efficient amplifier giving 2x GM for the same drain current and is compatible with Cherry Hooper style high bandwidth amplification architecture. The shunt feedback self biases inverters which are supported by the advanced technology nodes with NMOS and PMOS having the matched drive strength biasing them at the mid drill. They have no internal parasitic poles and offers easy design and layout iterations and it scales well with the technology. Nevertheless, they are sensitive to PVT variations, but its impact can be minimized by the use of LDO regulators. To achieve high bandwidth, we require programmable CTLEs in the TIA chain. The conventional CML CTLE needs higher supply to operate in linear region and its performance does not really scale well with the process and its non-ideal tail current limits its high frequency operations. So we choose the following inverter based Cherry Hooper style CTLE. It has low frequency path for the DC gain and the CR high pass filter path for the high frequency gain. The last trans impedance stage converts the previous transconductor stages current back to voltage. To achieve high bandwidth low noise TIA, we follow similar approach as multiple previous work with our proposed CTLE. Here we have low bandwidth shunt feedback as first stage followed by our CTLE. This is achieved by having low bandwidth high gain first trans impedance stage followed by the CTLE. The high gain first stage having higher feedback resistor lowers its input referred thermal noise. The targeted bandwidth is then recovered by the CTLE where CTLE input referred noise is suppressed by the first stage DC gain lowering the overall input referred noise while achieving desired bandwidth. Furthermore, the location of the single ended to differential conversion block in the TIA chain is crucial as it impacts noise bandwidth and power. Here we have inverter based TIA examples with various S2D architectures. First we have the replica based conventional, then we have S2D block in the first stage and here we have the S2D block after the first stage. Our work considers the single ended TIA with S2D block in the last stage with similar referencing technique used by the work from JSCC 2017. Having the S2D block in the last TIA stage helps us lower power and lower noise and also reduces the active area. Finally, here's the overview of our proposed inverter based TIA. It consists of three stages operating at 0.9 volt. The first stage is bandwidth limited shunt feedback inverter stage. Second stage is inverter based CTLE and third stage has another CTLE in parallel with VGA. We have inverter based low pass filter in feedback to subtract DC current from the PD. We provide on chip RC filter for PD bias which helps decouple the PD bias noise to the chip ground. For measurement purpose, we have linear CML buffers followed by required T coil and ESD diodes to drive the 50 ohm load of the test equipment. Going into further detail of the TIA schematic, we design our first shunt feedback inverter stage with 10 GHz bandwidth, which is roughly one third of the overall bandwidth, to allow maximum possible value for feedback resistor to maximize the DC gain and lower the thermal noise contribution, as discussed before. Our second stage, which is a Cherry Hooper style inverter based CTLE stage, which helps restore the targeted bandwidth. The peaking frequency is adjusted by these tunable resistors. NMOS and PMOS transistors of the CTLE are biased separately with diode connected inverter for more programmability, which also helps tune out any ringing in the frequency response arising from process variations or packaging related parasitics. And this trans impedance stage converts the transconductor's output current back to the voltage. Second stage is capable of providing 4 dB boost at 25 gigahertz. The third stage comprises of a programmable inverter based VGA with another CTLE similar to the second stage in parallel for further equalization. 
This last portion of the third stage has a large transimpedance stage with L1 inductor in series and L2 inductor in shunt feedback providing further bandwidth extension. Overall, the third stage provides 7 dB boost at 30 GHz. And here are the second and third stage CTLEs and VGA post layout simulations across maximum to minimum VGA and CTLE code settings, showing the changes in the DC gain as well as the peaking frequency of the CTLE. Now going back to the third stage, the output node DN and the input node DP of the final transimpedance stage forms TIA's pseudo-differential output. Compared to single-ended TIA output, the pseudo-differential conversion provides swing boost of 15%. Deferring single-ended to differential conversion at the end allows for lower power and lower noise design TIA. And lastly, we implement the linear CML output buffers operating at 1.2 volts with shunt inductive peaking designed to drive 50 ohm loads. It achieves 0 dB gain and 45 GHz bandwidth. And this is the post layout simulations of the TIA chain, which includes the PD model, optimized interconnect, CML buffers, and 50 ohm load. Here we can see the first stage having low bandwidth of 10 GHz with stages second and third combined together helps restore the overall bandwidth. Now let's take a look at our assembled prototype. To confirm the receiver performance with optimized interconnects and proposed TIA, we prepare the following co-packaged prototype with test chip. We co-packaged commercial PD labeled A with 0.6 ampere watt responsivity, 60 femtofarad capacitance and 40 gig OE bandwidth. The proposed TIA labeled as RX1 is implemented in CMOS chip shown in yellow. PDA to RX1 interconnect has a length of 250 micron with characteristics impedance of 75 ohm. We experiment longer interconnect with length of 500 micron with optimized characteristics impedance of 50 ohm with identical PD labeled as B and TIA labeled as RX2. And lastly, we experiment our proposed TIA with another commercial PD labeled as C with slightly higher responsivity of 0.7 amp per watt and capacitance of 70 femtofarad with lower bandwidth of 35 gigahertz compared to PDA and PDB. For electrical measurements, we also have another test structure without any PD attached. And here is our complete assembled, fabricated and co-packaged prototype with 16 nanometer FinFET chip in the center and commercial PDs on the sides flip attached with the probe pads on chip periphery for on-package probing. And this is the bottom view of the 2 by 2 millimeter test chip showing locations of the four identical TIAs labeled in pink from RX1 to 4. The digital control block contains the scan chain shift registers for setting the tuning bits. And this is the zoom in of one of the TIA slices with input output bumps and highlighting three stage TIA blocks, DC offset loop block and CML output buffer blocks. Now let's see the electrical measurements. The measurements reveal the transimpedance gain of 63 dB ohm with the bandwidth of 32 gigahertz and giving the dynamic range of 9 dB. And the measured group delay variation was verified to be less than plus or minus 5 picoseconds up to the 3 dB bandwidth of 32 gigahertz. And here's a summary of the total harmonic distortion across input current swing with the 1 dB compression point occurring at 320 microamp peak to peak at maximum gain. The measured input referred noise results in 3 microamp RMS or equivalently 16.9 picoamp per root hertz. Now let's take a look at our optical measurements. On the left, we have the optical measurement test bench where the prototype outputs are measured differentially using the sampling scope. The assembled prototype with optical and electrical probes are shown on the top right with overall test setup is shown in the bottom with the probe station and all the other equipment. Now let's take a quick tour of our optical measurement demo. Here we have the co-packaged prototype with optical probe on the left and electrical probe on the right. Taking a look inside the microscope, we have our CMOS chip in the center and on bottom is a commercial PD in green. This is the O-band laser source feeding into the Max Zener modulator driven by the broadband amplifier with the input pattern coming from the AWG. Here we see the 112 gigabits per second differential 4 pam eye diagram on sampling scope without using scope equalization. 
This is the resulting 4 PAM differential output I diagram of 112 gigabits per second with minus 6.1 dBm OMA without using any scope equalization meeting the 4.8 e to the minus 4 prefix symbol error rate limit. It was measured with RX1 and PDA with 250 micron interconnect. The eye opening is increased after applying the on-scope 4-tap FFE and is even further improved by adding 4-tap DFE. And this is the eye diagram with RX2 and PDB with 500 micron long interconnect showing similar eye opening as the one with 250 micron long interconnect previously shown under the same testing conditions. And this is the eye diagram from RX3 and PDC with slightly higher responsivity than PDA and B and hence showing slightly higher eye opening than RX1 and RX2. And this is the 4 pam symbol error rate curves across input OMA for 112 gigabits per second on RX1. For without on-scope equalization, minus 8.2 dBm OMA sensitivity is achieved meeting the prefect limit. Symbol error rate is further lowered with 4-tap FFE, 4-tap DFE and combinations of both. Owing to linearity limitations, the symbol error rate does not reduce beyond minus 3 dBm input OMA. And this is the 4 PAM sensitivity results summarized across different data rates. This work achieves minus 12.5 dBm at 100 gig, minus 10.6 at 106 gig, and minus 8.2 dBm at 112 gig, which could be further lowered by using the post FFE and DFE equalizations. This is the measured NRZ performance at 72 gigabits per second observed with minus 5.1 dBm OMA meeting the 1e to the minus 12 bit error rate indicated by the eye contours. And after enabling 4-tap FFE on scope, further eye opening was observed. This is the bit error rate waterfall curves revealing minus 5.6 dBm OMA sensitivity for without on scope equalization meeting 1e to the minus 12 bit error rate. And this is the NRZ sensitivity results summarized across different data rates in this table. This work achieves minus 13.9 dBm at 50 gig and minus 5.6 dBm at 72 gig, where this is also can be further lowered by using the on-scope 4-tap FFE. Now we show the comparison of this work with state-of-the-art. We compare with works implemented in CMOS. Taking a look at the highlights of electrical performance, first, our work handles higher PD, plus ESD capacitance at the input while achieving 63 dB ohm of gain. This is lower compared to the works compared here, but it trades off with our higher bandwidth of 32 GHz. In terms of average input referred noise PSD, it is similar to the work implemented also in 16 nanometer CMOS technology. Comparing the optical performance at 112 gig, it offers 450 millivolt differential 4 pam swing, this work offers comparable or lower TIA power with a side note that many of these compared work includes power from their output buffers and voltage regulators. Even with 40% lower PD responsivity with author's best knowledge, this work achieves highest 4 PAM data rates with optoelectrical measurements among the works implemented in CMOS and also achieves the best sensitivity at the same data rates accomplished by the compared works. And even the NRZ performance is achieved with comparably much lower sensitivity at similar data rates. And to conclude this presentation, our proposed inverter based TIA achieves 63 dB ohm gain, 32 GHz bandwidth, 16.9 picoamp per root hertz noise with 47 milliwatt power consumption proven with co-packaged CMOS chip and PDs with optimized interconnect between them. We demonstrated 112 gig 4 PAM with minus 8.2 dBm sensitivity, which puts this work as potential candidate for optical receivers targeted for 400 gig and 800 gig Ethernet applications. Here are our references. And lastly, we would like to thank and acknowledge these excellent collaborators for their technical discussions and tape out support. Thank you all for attending our talk.